If you're wanting to install macOS Monterey and make use of all the new features such as FaceTime SharePlay, Focus Mode and Live Text, Apple have once again updated the list of Macs that can and cannot be supported by this latest update. If you do have a Mac that Apple considers too old for the upgrade, then here's how to bypass Apple's software update checks and upgrade to Monterey version 12.5. So here you're looking at my 2008 MacBook running OS X El Capitan version 10.11.6. So what we're going to do today is upgrade this Mac to version 12.5 OS Monterey. I'm going to take you through doing a clean install of Monterey as well as showing you where you can do an upgrade if you want to keep all your files. So what you're going to need for this upgrade you're going to firstly need a Mac that was manufactured between 2008 and 2015. You're going to also need an SSD hard drive and at least 8GB of RAM. Now the mechanical spinning hard drives will work but you will get some sluggish performance, especially if you have less than 8GB of RAM. So I suggest that you check your specs right now. Finally, you're going to need a USB drive with at least 16GB of storage. So what do I need to do prior to upgrading? Well firstly, you need to back up your files. I can't stress how important this is at this stage because if you go through the rest of this clean install and don't back up your files, you will lose everything. What I suggest you use is either Time Machine, which is built into all Macs, a cloud storage service such as iCloud or Google Drive, or just a traditional backup where you copy your files to an external hard drive. So we're going to use a bit of software called OpenCore Legacy Patcher. This is an independently developed application to get you updated to the latest versions of OS X. If we go to the Getting Started menu, we firstly want to check the supported models. Down the left hand side, you'll see all the various supported models through all the different computers that Apple make. What I would draw your attention to is the comments because these comments determine what is supported in this upgrade and what isn't. Now you can go to the forums to ask questions to whether these have been resolved, but this is your first stop to check whether your computer is supported. Anything prior to 2008 is not supported. So as we need a USB drive, we need to get that formatted and I prefer to do it now rather than in the install process, just so it's a fresh drive. To do that, you need to insert your USB drive into a USB port. Now, many of you might have USB 2 ports. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be a little bit slow when we're downloading and installing. So you can insert your USB drive now. We should see ours coming online shortly. There it is. Now what I want you to do is go to Applications. You can do Shift Command A to get there quickly. Then you need to go to Dish Utility in the Utilities menu, just here. Select the top level of your disk, go to Arrays, make sure OS X Extended Journaled and GUID Partition Map are selected and then click Arrays. It will unmount the disk, erase it and then hopefully remount it to have a look at what's going on. And now we've got a completely fresh drive ready to install on. So we'll come out of Dish Utility and close the Utilities menu down and just go back into the OpenCore Legacy Patcher website. So if we back up a page now and we're going to go to the Download and Build macOS Installer. If you click on OpenCore Legacy Patcher Release Apps, it'll take you through to this page. This is the latest version of the patcher and if you scroll down, go to opencorepatcher.gui.app.zip and download it. Okay, so now the app is downloaded. You need to go into the downloads folder, which it should have downloaded to. And we can see it just there. Now pick it up and drag it into your applications folder. Click on applications. Scroll down so we can see the application, which is just there, and open it up. I'm just going to close down Safari so we can see things a bit more clearly. When OpenCore Patcher opens up, you click open, and it's opened the application itself. So we're going to create macOS installer. So if I click on that, we're going to 
download macOS installer. If you have downloaded the installer already, use this option to locate it on your hard drive. But the easiest thing to do is click on download macOS installer. It will have a look directly to Apple to see what's available currently. So as you can see, it's given us three options. We're going to go for 12.5.1 as it's the latest version. And we just click here. It will say start in download. And it will download now. So we'll just wait for that to happen. So now you need to put your password in for your user account. OK, now it's finished installing to the application folder. We're going to click on Flash Installer. Click on Install macOS Monterey. You now need to select your USB 2 drive. I know that this one is my USB 2 drive. Don't select the disk image. Select this one. And now it's going to format the drive again. Now we did it before just to make sure it was clean, but worst case scenario, if you had forgotten to do that, it will do it at this stage. Before it installs on the drive, it'll ask you to enter your password, which I'll do now. And now it's going to be right into the drive. You've seen it disappear off your desktop. Once it's written all of the information, it will reappear, so don't worry. And now you can see it's renamed as Install macOS Monterey, which is quite helpful when you come to do the install process as it helps identify your drive. So we now need to click on Install Open Core to Disk. And it's going to be building a configuration profile based on our Mac and what it has found currently installed. You have to do this on the same computer that you are going to install it on, or it won't work correctly. Go to Install to Disk. And then once again, we're going to select our USB drive, which is this one. And say yes to that. Enter our admin. It's now creating an EFI partition on the USB drive, which you saw pop up and disappear. That's because that's going to be the option we're going to boot from. Before you click restart, you need to hold down the Alt or Option key. This will mean that it will go into the boot picker screen and allow us to continue with the install. If you don't, it will just reboot straight back into El Capitan. So keep holding the Option key and after it reboots, it will show you this screen. This is all our volumes on our computer. Using the arrow keys, move across to EFI boot and click on the upwards arrow. Remember, you're still holding the Option key. Then do the same with the macOS Monterey symbol and click on the up arrow. The computer is now loading into macOS recovery. At this point, we can do one of two different things. If we want to do a straight upgrade to Monterey, we just click on install macOS Monterey. This is not the clean install, this is the straight upgrade. So if you click continue, it takes you through to this screen. Click continue again. And then you need to agree to Apple's terms and conditions and agree again. It's only at this stage that you have to select the Macintosh HD. This will upgrade your current operating system and keep all your files. But for this guide, we're going to do a clean install. So let's quit out of the install program. Quit there. Then we're going to go to Dish Utility. Click Continue and it will open Dish Utility. So in Dish Utility, you can see all the different drives. Your main hard drive is the Macintosh HD at the top. Now, what we want to do now is to erase this drive. Let me just give you a last final warning that when you erase this drive, you will lose all your files. So just be confident that that is what you want to do. So if we go to Erase, click here. Then we need to make sure it's on Mac OS Extended Journaled and then click Erase. So it's now going through the Erase process. Let's have a look at the details. And now it's all completed. Click Done here. And now we have a fresh volume ready to install. So if we quit this utility, just click here. Now we need to go back to the Install Mac OS Monterey option. Click here and click Continue. 
we're going to see the same screens we had before, but now we've got a fresh drive. So we'll click continue again. And we now need to agree to those terms and conditions that we saw before. Select the Macintosh HD, which is just formatted and do continue. And it will install to that internal drive. It's going to go through a few times of restarting, updating, restarting, updating. So what's nice in this latest version of Open Patch is that it will reboot and go to the correct options every time, save you having to press Alt or hold any other keys when it's rebooting. You just need to let it go through this process. Once it's rebooted a couple more times, it will get up to desktop. So don't panic that nothing's happening. It is rebooting. It might just be quite slow. It depends on the speed of your Mac. I found that actually this section took over an hour to get through. So obviously I've sped it up in this video. Just be patient and don't think it's not doing anything because it will boot to the desktop eventually. So we're back up to desktop after creating our user and OpenCore Legacy Patch has detected that we are still booted from the USB drive and not from the internal drive. So what it's going to do here is install OpenCore Legacy Patcher to the local disk. So we'll go ahead by clicking OK. It's going to open OpenCore. And it's having a look through our specs of our Mac at the moment and seeing what we need, what we don't need. So it's created a, a temp file here again, like we did earlier on. It's built an installer based on our Mac and what it has found currently installed. So it's given us the option to install to disk. So let's go ahead. So it's now asking us which disk we want to put it on. Now we want to put it on the internal hard drive and not on the USB drive. As it says here, the blue is representing the disk the open core is currently booted from. So we do not want to install it over the top of the one we're already booted from. So we're going to put it on our internal drive, which is our Samsung. I'll click that and only one comes up. It will see the partition. So we'll um, click this. And now it's going to install. It's asking for admin password, which I shall put in. And then it is asking us to reboot the system. As soon as we've clicked restart, we need to hold down the Alt key or Option and remove your USB drive. Try to do that before the chime sounds. And then it's going to boot up like this. Here you can see it's brought up the EFI bootloader and the Macintosh hard drive. What you need to do is hold down control. That will change the symbol below the EFI logo and click on the EFI boot. And once you've done that, it will take you through to the next screen, which should be the Macintosh HD. Click on that and it will boot you to the desktop. Now we're back to the desktop, we need to really change the boot configuration because at the moment it will come up with the boot picker screen so it's giving you the option of where to boot from. But we can change that with the open core patcher. So we're going to go to applications and then we're going to find our open core patcher which is just there. We load it up. Okay, so now we're going to click on settings and we're going to unselect show boot picker. So this will get rid of the options you get when you boot up your computer. So you don't have to hold down alt or anything like that and it'll boot straight to desktop. So we'll untick that and return to main menu and build and install open core. So it's having a look at our current installation. And now it's asking us once again, like we had before, if we want to install that new configuration to our disk, which of course we do, because we want to tell the computer to boot straight to the desktop. So I'm going to say install to disk. It's having a look what disks are plugged in. Of course, at the moment, we just have the one. So we click on that. And we click like we did before with the EFI partition. It will install like this. Ask for admin password. And it's going to ask us to reboot. So we're going to do that right now. 
if you're having trouble with any of the features on your computer that it's saying are supported in the guide that we saw previously, you want to check through OpenCore Patcher that there aren't any more updates. So we're going to do it this way. If we open OpenCore Patcher from our applications, then we want to go to Post Install Root Patch. This is going to have a look for anything that is missing currently from your Mac. In my case, it looks like there's an issue with the graphics and the networking, namely the wireless networking, and finally the backlight on the keyboard. So what you're going to do is do start root patching, which will download and start to install all those elements that are missing. So I'm going to press start root patching now. And it's asking me to relaunch as the root. So we'll click yes. And it's asking me to put in my admin, which I've done now. Now it's starting the patch process based on what it was missing before. It's downloaded them from its own software. It's now unzipping all the files and getting ready to patch the Mac. As you can see, there's lots of processes going on here. So as it's saying, it may take some time, dependent on the speed of your Mac, that might be you know, a couple of minutes or longer. You need to let this run all the way through because it could cause problems with your Mac if you don't. So it's now asking us to reboot, so we're going to do that right now. Okay, so we're now back up to desktop. And as you can see, I'm now running Mac OS Monterey version 12.5.1 on my late 2008 MacBook. So you should be able to use everything normally now. All the features of Monterey should be available to you. If not, just consult the Open Patch website because it might be able to give you some further advice on what to do if something isn't working. If you want to check out my other video on upgrading to Catalina, if you don't want to come all the way up to Monterey, just click on the link above. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, so please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and check back soon for more content.